So the first thing we need to do is we need to detension the timing chain. Uh, to do that you take this nut out and under this nut or behind this nut that's tighter than crap is a spring. <clears throat> Probably could have staged that, huh? That would have saved everybody from like puking from motion sickness. But basically you pull this nut out, it spits out a spring and that kind of takes the tension off. It doesn't really because this one's geared. But basically you take all the there's four bolts per side, you pull those out, tip the cams down and pull it out. But if you don't do this first, it'll spring push out the tensioner even full, farther. So it is important that this gets done. Okay, time lapse until I get this stupid spring out. That's what you've got. You've got uh, bucket bolt and a spring. You can set those aside in your magnetic dish or whatever you like. And then next up we're going to pull all those bolts out and then after I pull them out I'll turn the camera back on and I'll tip the cams up and out. You want to put a wire around the chain and chain it up or wire it up so that it doesn't fall down in the motor. If it does it's not the end of the world. You can use a magnet, fish it up. Um, we'll go from there. When you take uh, one th important note, when you take these off, there's a little shim that's inside of there that runs on the cam that holds the cam in place, you know, side to side. So you'll want to be really careful when you take these off not to drop that little shim down in there. They usually stick with oil, but not always. So this is just detail about how the tensioner works. I'm not a huge fan of this one. Instead of using a screwdriver or something from the back, there's a spring that goes in here with a cap nut. Uh, it is ratcheting, which I think is necessary. If you look down at the top where the timing chain goes in, this will stick out to the left side of the bike. And the way that it's relieved is you pull down on that little nub. I don't know if you can see it. If you have a dental tool or something like this, you can reach down in there without having to take it out and you can push on it with the dental tool and then uh, what I did is uh, just to recap I took what my intake valve clearance is which is five to nine thousandths of an inch and I converted that to metric that converts to be 0.235 millimeters of clearance what it should be and basically you subtract that from your old bucket if you were zeroed out the way that my, the bike I'm working on is. And so uh, it calls for a shim of 2.365. They don't do a 2.365, it only goes to two decimal places. It's probably going to be a 2.35. Uh, for the right side I subtracted uh, this number, which is the valve clearance from this, because I was zeroed out, so there was no difference. Um, and I came up with 2.165 which would probably boil out to be about a 2.15 if they have it. So these are what I'm shooting for to get from the shop. I usually like to go a little bit thinner uh, which creates more valve lash but they last longer. Cause like I say, okay here's the math segment to figure out how to decide what shim you want to put into it. What you do is you record what your valve clearances are Mine were zero, and these are the shims that I had in there. So you take the difference between your specified valve clearance, which for the intake is what we're doing the exhaust. We don't need to worry about the exhaust. The exhaust were fine. Uh, the intake is supposed to be between five and nine thousandths. I had zero, so you take the difference between what it should be and what you have. I like to go with the bigger one because a lot of what's done on the bike side turn out are trail rides. If it's a performance race bike, go with this number. If it's a trail riding bike and you want less maintenance, do this number. Um, but basically, difference between what you're recording that. So, you do that and zero, you come up with just whatever the number is. So you take your old shim and then convert this to metric and then subtract this value from inches to metric, subtract it from your shim, this is in millimeters, and then that will give you what your new shim is. So once again, old shim minus specified clearance that you want, and then that will give you what your new shim should be. Basically you're cutting the shim down to compensate these valves where they wear. Valves are like a little trumpet shape. 
they wear down where they seat here and here and so this goes up and eventually at the top of the valve where your cam lobe is basically it wears out to where it's pushing it down to where you have an air gap here so you cut down to a thinner shim and by cutting down to a thinner shim it enables this to close up giving you compression so that it will start easy again and give you a good tight pull so anyway I hope that's helpful I'm going to go buy some shims and finish this video